And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines. Everybody say all the Philistines. I say all the Philistines went up to seek David. I just want you to know they, they didn't have his good in mind here. They's coming after him. David heard of it and went out against them. And the Philistines came and spread themselves out in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? And wilt thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto him, Go up, for I will deliver them into thine hand. For the next little bit, I'm going to preach to you a message I feel like the Lord quickened to my heart today. Trusting in the anointing. Say that with me. Trusting in the anointing. Amen. Lord, I ask you to help me today. Not just to speak words and concepts and philosophies and ideas, but Lord, I pray through me today, through the words that I speak, I pray that truly your word would flow, that your people would be quickened, that your people would be washed, that people would be uh, uh, have a revelation for themselves, that even the words I say would not even seem to come from a man, but they would seem to come from the very heart of God. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. You know, my greatest treasure is the Word of God. It has never failed to encourage me. It has never failed to challenge me. It has never failed to convict me. I live with a deep faith in God's ability to speak to me through His Holy Word. Can I get a witness? And it's a good reason because He has spoken to me through His Word so many times. I have read His Word through tears as they flowed down my face. I have read it even while weeping. I have read it while I prayed. And I can even think of times while I was reading the Word of God, the rejoicing that was in my heart was so great, I had to stop reading the Word of God and close my eyes and just start thanking God. Thank you, Lord, for Your Word that speaks to me. This morning is my sincere desire that while I stand and preach to you the Word of God, that each and every one of you would experience with me the encouragement, the challenge, the conviction, and the holy reminder that God's Word is still alive, and it still works, and it still means something to you. Not just in a historical sense, not just in a theological sense, but in the sense of now. God's Word is important and vital to me. Somebody say, God's Word, God's Word. is important. Psalms 119, uh, uh, David said, O Lord, quicken me according to Thy Word. This morning I read to you 1 Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 8. The Bible says, And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines came up. You know, I, I know that you probably already know this, but I'm going to tell you something that you already know. You have an enemy. You have an enemy that hates you. In fact, I'd say that you have more than one enemy. When the Bible says that all the Philistines came out there, sometimes we may feel all of hell shows up. Amen. No doubt there's, a, there's Satan and there's Lucifer, but Satan and Lucifer is not a, 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 um, omniscient. He's not everywhere. He's not omnipresent. He is, he ha, he's bound to a certain place. But there's a lot of devils. Amen? There are. We understand that. Jesus met one man that had a, a legion of devils in him. There's a lot of devils. And so I want you to understand that there is something about you that makes the devil hate you. You have an enemy. And, and there's something about when God specifically begins to work in your life 
Amen. When God puts a fresh anointing on your life, the devil's going to come out and try to attack you at that moment to keep you from stepping in to that new place of purpose and that new place of God's will in your life. You know, the first time we read of David and the Philistines was right after he was anointed. Samuel came to David's house when he was about 15 years old. And Samuel came to his dad and said, I want all your boys out here. i got to look at them. And all the boys of Jesse stood up and lined up the oldest to the youngest. Samuel looked at them and said, uh, did you forget one? Now, I don't know what that'd be like. I have three, but, but he had a bunch of them. I was talking to someone the other day, Brother Osborne, Brother Pat Osborne's dad. He said he had eight. If I had eight, I might forget one of them. Jesse got to looking when, oh, David's not here. He said, well, I, we're not going to sit down till David gets there. They go out in the field and they find David. And David runs up 15 years old. And the voice of the Lord speaks to Samuel and said, this is the one I want you to anoint. And David, as a 15-year-old boy, felt that warm, holy anointing oil poured on his head. And one of the, the next things that happens in David's life as he finds himself confronted with a Philistine named Goliath. First time he was anointed. Can I tell you the anointing that happened in David's life? It was because God wanted to use him to take the devil down. To take, take Goliath down. We are anointed more than just so you feel good about yourself. You're anointed in God's hand on your life. Is it just so you have a few more Benjamins to count in your bank account? God doesn't put an anointing on your life so you can sit there and feel good. Feel the presence of the Lord. The anointing has a purpose. And David's first anointing was about the beginning of him being used by God to resist the kingdom of God's enemies and the people of God's enemies. It was to be a resistance. Everybody say resist. You know, one of the great things that sometimes we may fail to appreciate is that one of the things that we must always be vigilant, we are forever a voice and an influence of resistance against the wickedness that is in this world. When God touches you, the reason, one of the reasons why the devil hates you is because you are in his face, God's child. The first anointing was when Samuel came. The second anointing was when, was when he was 30, 15 years later. The Bible says Judah anointed David as king. His extended family. At first he was anointed by, by the man of God. Then he was anointed by his close friends, his close family. They recognized what the man of God said, and all of Judah came together, and they anointed David at the age of 30, and he reigned in Hebron as king over a very small subset of Israel. But the day came, about seven years later, that all of Israel, that's where we read, when all of Israel anointed David to be king. Everybody say the third anointing. He was anointed the third time and that was the time when he was anointed by everybody in God's kingdom. Amen. And it's true even in our own life when God begins to work in our life, nobody may recognize what God's doing in our life. There's times when God's doing something in our life and even our father doesn't know about it. And maybe our brothers don't know about it. In fact, they may be the source of resistance to what God's doing in our life. When, when, when he was anointed by Judah, do you know where his resistance came from? Israel. It was the, those that followed Saul came out and they, they, they sat down and talked to one another. They ended up having a fight and, and a bunch of the Israelites died at the hand of the Judahites. Everybody said conflict. Amen. I wish I could tell you that when God begins to put his anointing on your life, that, it, that it's all easy sailing and downhill and ice cream and cookies. and You fill in the blank. I'm going to see if I can go without saying it. 
Just a, that, don't, don't make me say it. I wish I could tell you it's all peaches and cream or apples and cream. Man, I like apple pie. Some ice cream. Amen. It's close, close. Ooh, we better hurry up. Put in second gear. Everybody say the third anointing. You know, it is important for us to recognize that, 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 that there are times when it seems like we come to church or we are down in prayer and in our, our personal devotion and, and maybe we have been stretching for God and, and trying to make space for God to work in our life and maybe we're listening a little uh, keener. Maybe there's, there's some sanctification going on in our life and it's so disappointing because it seems like that means I would feel better. I would have more freedom. But in reality, it's like the, the big bad wolf's knocking on my door. Little pig, little pig, let me in. I'm about to hurt my chinny chin chin. Anybody ever felt that way? We just do good, good to shut the door, keep the devil out. Somebody said amen. But can I tell you that that's sometimes what you got to do? You just got to resist the devil. When you've done all to stand, stand ye therefore, amen, and just keep standing. I'm not going to sit down just because the devil's fighting me. God gave me an anointing to stand up in the devil's face and say, I ain't turning back. I ain't sitting down. I'm not stopping. I may not be seeing what I want to see. I may not, I may not be experiencing what I want to experience, but I've already got something in my tank. Amen. God's already done so much for me that I don't have any reason but to give God. Am I too loud, Brother Nate? Amen. He told me sometimes I'm too loud. Uh, Brother BJ, you can turn up the bass a little bit. Brother Nate told me he told you that the bass was a little loud. He said his teeth were rattling. But you can turn, you turn up just a little bit more. You've never experienced that before. A bass player hearing someone, they can turn their bass up. That may not have ever happened before. Write it down. Amen. And, and, and I, what I wanted to say to you is sometimes the resistance is a confirmation. Now, now, now the devil, his purpose isn't to be a voice of confirmation in, his, in your life. His purpose is to put so doubt and to so fear and so confusion. But can I tell you, if the hell's coming against you, that just needs to tell you, well, that must have been God that told me something good's about to happen. That vision must be from God. That dream must be from God. How do I know? Because the devil's fighting me. I found in my own life, I've lived long enough. Uh, you know, the Bible says your young men shall see visions. And I was blessed to be raised in the church and, and, and have a Holy Ghost experience as a young person. And I, on many occasions, the Lord gave me visions. I still remember. I can still see them. I mean, I had some just amazing revelation as a child. And, and I, I have that happen to me. Sometimes when I pray, I'll see something. And now that I'm getting older, I'm having more dreams. I don't know if it's pizza or God. Sometimes I don't know. Amen. I usually like them. If I like them, it's, it's, it's God. If I don't like them, it's pizza. But, but I have learned that oftentimes when I have been given a vision or a prophetic word, what follows isn't something good. It's usually hell. It's usually trouble. It's usually difficulty. Why? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. God will put fresh faith in your heart when he knows you're about to go through a battle. And God may have seen, hey, the Philistines are about to come get David. David needs a fresh anointing. David needs to step up into a new dimension. So God gave him a new anointing because there's a brand new uh, offense of the devil about to come. Amen. And David could have looked at the enemy and said, thank you. I didn't think I needed a confirmation, but thank you, devil. Amen. Thank you for coming against me because you have 
just confirmed in my life that what God has told me is going to come to pass. I can trust my anointing because sometimes the devil is the, my best amen corner. Come on, somebody. 45 times you find David and the Philistines in the same verse. Amen. You find there is a... that the, the, the enemy has a way of coming against us. I read something the other day that a train, how a train stays on the train. Does anybody know about trains? Anybody? So, so nobody can know if I'm wrong on this. So you just believe whatever I tell you. I read that what helps a train stay on the track is that the track is a certain distance and the, the carriage of the train engine and the train cars that the wheels come down and there's a lip on the uh, outside wheel and it sits on the inside of the track and y'all see that and so the wheel the wheel comes down here's the track and it's got a lip on both wheels and there is a pressure put on both of those wheels so they're not just sitting there rolling but there is a tension between the wheel and the rail and that tension is pushes against those rails and that's part of what keeps the train moving down the track because there is that tension that is keeping that 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 train connected to the rail. Everybody say tension. Everybody say resistance. And sometimes we have to recognize it is the tension in our life. It's the resistance in our life. Amen. Sometimes it's the trouble in our life that makes us pray. Amen. Sometimes it's the darkness of the night that makes us light our candle. It's the burden we carry sometimes that causes us to pray. And sometimes people say, well, if I could just get this one thing right in my life, everything would be right. But what a terrible thing would be is if God answered all our prayers and he took away all our burdens. And we, like many people before, forgot and became a train wreck because we were we we the lord took the tension took the resistance away somebody say praise the lord amen i want to know i want you to know today we don't wrestle against flesh and blood amen i know sometimes our trouble comes dressed up like people <laughs> Uh, you know, all of us at times have been willing vessels to be instruments of the devil. And all the parents say, Amen. What you saying? You mean my kids still act like the devil sometimes? Yep. I do. All the children said, Amen. Sometimes the Lord will allow our parents to have a bad day and we'll say my parents are acting like the devil everybody say resistance sometimes the devil finds a co-worker amen now we'll move away from uncomfortable ground it's a co-worker and, and, and they may not even know it but they can be used as a conduit for the enemy to come against you. How many of you experienced that? You know it's the truth. And what I'm saying to you is, is sometimes uh, we, we live our life and we wonder, Lord, God, help me. What, what is going on? Is there something wrong? No, something is right. When the enemy comes in like a flood, that should be a witness to you. Amen. The Lord is going to take care of me. I'm not going to be afraid. Amen. The Lord is my, the one that fights my battles. The Lord beat the Philistine. I'm going to get through before my alarm goes off. The Lord beat the Philistines for David. Somebody said amen. You know, one of the things David did 
when the, the Bible says that all, all the Philistines came out, you know what David did? Do you, anybody remember what David did right after the Philistines came out against him? He cheated. <laughs> you probably knew anyway. Everybody say, inquired of the Lord. Everybody say, ask God. You know, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. And sometimes we need to pray and say, Lord, how do you want me to handle this? And you know what? The Lord will tell you this time. He said, go up, resist them straight on in the face. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. But the next time they came, do you know what the David said? Lord, shall I go up? And the Lord said, nope, don't go up. Go around. And go wait until the wind starts blowing. Amen. I'm telling you today, you need to trust your anointing. When the devil is fighting you and the devil is tempting you and the devil is trying you and, and discouragement and fear and trouble and every tire that can go flat goes flat. Every, every leak that can leak starts leaking and everything that seems that can go wrong goes wrong. You just need to know, hey, I must have really got a blessing on Sunday. And I'm going to just keep on pressing through. I'm not going to let the enemy stop me from getting what God has planned for me. Because you know what happened as soon as they resisted the work of the enemy? It was a brand new season for David. It was a brand new extended season of blessing. But he needed to fight the enemy when the enemy showed up. Can I tell you, when the enemy shows up, don't go on vacation from God. Make sure if you ever pray, make sure you pray when the devil shows up to fight. Somebody said amen. Everybody said trust your anointing. Amen. I'm going to conclude. i turn my alarm off. Oh, I never started it. <laughs> Come help me. It's just 12, so I guess I'm all right. How many of you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you have had some anointings happen in your life? I mean, I mean, you look back, it may have been, may have come in a time when the Lord spoke to you in a dream or may have been a vision or a prophetic word or uh, maybe somebody was preaching, maybe even I was preaching. And you look back and say, I know I got an anointing. Right? And what I'm saying to you is the anointing that has got you this far. That first anointing worked for David. But can I tell you, that if you live for God long enough, Brother Phillips, can anybody count how many times you've been anointed? When you have had a special blessing from God, I mean, as young as you are, Brother Wyatt, I bet you've got more than three anointings. Do you remember when you got the Holy Ghost? How old were you? Six. Me too. I was six. How old were you when you got the Holy Ghost? Wow. You beat. You win. Ah. How about you, Brother Ryan? Twelve. And yeah, that's the greatest anointing any person can ever have. That's better than the oil that flowed out of Samuel's horn. Why? Because it comes from God. That's the anointing of the Holy God being poured out in our life. And how many times have I been renewed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost? I got the Holy Ghost as a child. I got the Holy Ghost every year again when I went to, went to youth camp. And I can say this year, at the ripe young age of 49, I have received a fresh anointing more than once this year. Can somebody say praise the Lord? And I have woke up the next morning and I was like, I was expecting you, devil. Thank you for confirming what I knew on Sunday. God just gave me a fresh anointing. How many of you want a fresh anointing in your life? If you do, stand up real quick. I want a fresh touch of God in my life. The devil said, well, don't you do it. I'm going to come get you. And you say to the devil, you come get me, I'm going to walk on you. Because I've never seen a time when the devil's come against me, when the devil, when God didn't give me victory over the devil. Come on, somebody. Can we just raise our hand and talk to Jesus? Jesus.
I thank you for what you've already done in my life. I thank you, Lord, the first time you filled me with the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord Jesus, the second time, God, you filled me with the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the thousand and thirty-ninth time you put a fresh anointing on my life. And God, Lord Jesus, whether it happened during this service or maybe during this message or if it happens on Monday morning this week, God, I pray for a fresh anointing that we one more time with fresh revelation say Lord I thank you for the anointing in my life because of the anointing I know I am going to overcome because of the anointing I know I'm going to have victory because of the anointing I know I'm going to have peace somebody say praise God hallelujah can we just step forward amen just gather around the front they're going to sing and let's just talk to the Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm going through. I'm going.